story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. The Chess Olympiad 2014 from Tromsø, Norway. It's going to be a great, great, great Olympiad. They're predicting that 100 million people will watch the games online. 1,500 different competitors, as well as 160 nations. What a great event. I'm told this is the fourth largest sporting event in the world. Don't miss any of the action. Hey, folks, Jack Cordesco back again. Great game, great game. Round three from the 41st. Chess Olympiad currently being played in Tromsø, Norway, between number two rated in the world, Levin Aronian, from Armenia, and Maxime Vichet Lagraf from France. Maxime's another top ten player. This is the Armenia French uh, match, and from round three. So let's get to it. Aronian's white, MVL as they call him, is black. It's going to be a King's Indian, which is always fun. So let's go through it. E4, knight c3, bishop e3, knight c6, knight a6. Not much of a King's Indian player. Probably should play it. I've been fooling around with the Goonfell without much success. <laughs> Small and tiny advantage for black. We'll call it even. Queen to d2. Now, I like to do that myself. Bring the bishop queen. Make him trade off the dark squared bishop. Rook to b8. Rook to c1. Bishop d7. And this is where white tries to gain some more space. Pushes that knight away. Knight comes right up to e5. And knight to g3, you see that quite a bit in King's Indian. I like to set up for white and black, to tell you the truth. But according to the computer off screen, it's about a three quarter advantage for a uh, three quarter pawn advantage for black. Both of them got space. I mean, it's anybody's game here. A lot of play. Rook to e8. A little cramped on the pawns for black, but he should break out soon. Computer had thought that maybe h5 was worth looking at, because after h4, c5. Interesting. Uh, Scenario there. After rook d8, h3. Got to cover that key g4 square. You don't want any of these pieces jumping in here later. When this pawn moves. b5, open it up on the queen side. b3, h5, which the computer suggested before. Do you see that a lot in the King's Indian? f4, here it comes. There comes the push by white. White's not castle yet, in case anybody hasn't noticed. Knight takes. Pawn takes. Hits the knight. What to do, what to do. E5. D takes. Not as good as H takes, because after E takes, E takes, C takes. That's a pretty good advantage for white. Piece for a pawn. After D takes, F takes, H takes, E takes, E takes, Bishop to E2. Now, right now, Lagrave has sacrificed a piece for two pawns. I have to see how this works out. He's got quite a quite a pawn storm coming here, at least theoretically, here. And his bishop bearing down. We'll have to see how this works out for him. Queen e7. Even with the two p two pawns for a piece, it's only half point half pawn advantage for white. Knight to d1. B takes. If f5, some just just goes right after it. After castles, g5, rook to e1. Not as good. It's not as good for white. After B takes castles, Bishop A4, 
Bishop F4. Threatening that advanced pawn. This is a very peculiar position. Look at that isolated D pawn on D5. You're down a piece, but you've got three pawns now for the piece. G5, kicking the bishop. A bishop takes. Queen takes, queen takes, rook takes. Knight to c3, rook d3, bishop takes, rook to b7, knight takes a4, and then rook takes. Really strange set of exchanges there. Now if you followed all that, <laughs> I went a little fast on all those exchanges. If you want to go back in the video and check it out, it was just this long series that ended up, in the end, having black up a pawn. Now according to the computer off screen, I've got my Fritz 13 running. It's about three quarters advantage, a pawn advantage for white. So MVL got out of that, that melee pretty good. D6 of course, pass pawns must be pushed. Rook to D7, Knight B6 hitting the Rook. Of course you see why he can't take because Knight takes. Rook to d8, just to illustrate, after rook takes, knight takes, rook, knight takes, rook takes, rook c7, and it's a big, it's really big advantage for white. After rook to d8, rook takes c4, rook to e6, hitting the pawn again, taking the pawn again won't really matter, because after checks, King to h7, you're back to that again, and you lose the exchange. Rook to e6, d7, that pawn is right down there. f5, okay, you're white here, what do you do? You're past pawns, your whole, whole spiel here. How are you going to protect your knight and protect that pawn? Rook to b1. Rook to d6, now you're hitting it twice. King f1, bishop d4. You see quite a bit of maneuvering now. Rook takes, rook takes, king f8. Here comes the king to come after the pawn. Rook to c5. How are you going to guard these pawns? It's tough, tough, tough. These rook, especially double rook pawn innings, are just murderous on your brain. F6. Rook takes. King e7. We can see this coming. Now we've got everything. Everything is centered on this pawn right here. The whole thing. Rook to a4. Rook takes. Rook takes. Rook takes. Rook takes. White's up back being a pawn again, but... Why can't win this? We'll go through the next few moves. Rook to d2. Rook. King e6. a4. Rook a2. I'll go through it fairly quickly because this is a drawn ending. King f5. King g1. g4. King. Takes, takes. King g6. a6. Black has to be careful. Can't let that pawn get too far down. Rook a3 check. King check. King f3. Now rook a2. And it goes way up. And score. It's almost a two point advantage for white. It says it should have gone king to f5 instead. But after rook to a2. I think he gives white a little bit of life here. Rook. King. Pawn, rook, king, rook to d4. And now, actually, white sits pretty good here. He went king to d3. And his entire advantage was gone. Rook takes check, king to c4. I don't think he could have won it anyway. Rook to a3, king, pawn, 
Rook, pawn, check, king, rook, gonna g5, king to b4, rook to a1, it's dead drawn now. I gotta tell you, I'm surprised at Aronian, because these rook pawn endings are maddening, but a couple of miscues there towards the end. I think he could have put more pressure on Vachey Lagrave. But anyway, folks, it ended up a draw, 0.00, .00 on the computer. I see they were right, it's dead drawn. Of course, what's going to happen is, even if he pushes, manages to get this pawn down here, this rook will eventually take, and by then this pawn will be down here with the king helping it and not to give up this rook in order to save it. So, anyway, folks, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it from round three of the 41st Chess Olympiad from Tromsø, Norway. I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Chesco's Corner Store is hosting its fifth annual chess championship. The Broome County Chess Championship Francis Cordisco Memorial got started over the weekend. Organizer John Cordisco says it's an opportunity for chess fans, both experts and newcomers, to test their level of skill. There are two sections depending on level of play, and both have cash prizes for the top three winners. We draw some really good players. There's some pretty good players in this county, and it's quite a, it's a, a very high quality chess compared to the number of people in the area. It's a great tournament, and I uh, encourage people to come down and, and just to watch if they want. The second and final round is this Sunday from 10 until 4, and it takes place at Cordisco's Corner Store at 308 Shenango Street in Binghamton.